Uh, good afternoon, everyone. We're just about to start. We have a few more attendees signing in, but I do believe that we have a quorum for today's webinar. Uh, it is entitled Women in Law, Life, Career, and Family, and it is part of a series of candid discussions with leading lawyers. And today we have a senior counsel, Patricia Nyaundi, who will be uh, talking with us and sharing her life experiences. Before we start, we'd want to commit today's meeting to prayer. And I'd like to have Abale, known as Christine Figa, to lead us in the opening prayer. Thank you, Jackie. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this day you've blessed us with, an opportunity that you have given unto us, O oh Lord, to just share our ideas with uh, uh, Madam Patricia Nyaundi. Father, we thank you for enabling her to be here. We pray, King of Kings, that you lead us and you guide us, O oh Lord, in everything that we're going to discuss. May you strengthen her and give her the wisdom that she needs, oh Lord, to be able to speak to us. And may you, Lord, prepare our hearts and our minds to be able to listen and internalize everything that we shall discuss today. It is in Jesus' name we have prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, uh, Christine Figa Kabale, for that wonderful prayer. And now that we have committed this meeting to God, it is good to just reflect on why we are here today. I want to welcome you all. We are going to have a candid discussion. It is a candid discussion amongst women, specifically women who are practitioners in law. We are lawyers, we are advocates, and we are engaged in various activities in boardrooms, in courtrooms, in lecture rooms. We all have one thread in common. We are just women. Sometimes that phrase means that if you speak up or when you speak up or how you speak up, the answer is, who is this woman who dares to speak amongst men? We want to talk to each other, listen to each other, and above all, hear the senior council who have gone before us who have paved the way for us, who have experienced challenges, probably that many of us will never uh, experience, and who have enabled us to get to where we are. We are truly a community that stands on the shoulders of giants, and today we have a giant amongst us. Before we invite Dr. Mercy Deche to introduce to us our speaker today, allow me to recognize our hosts. We are hosted today by the University of Nairobi, and we are doing this program as the MLS Women or Ladies Chapter. Um, I will start with the Associate Dean, Dr. Sarah Kinyanjui, uh, without whom we would not have been able to manage this program. Dr. Sarah is well known uh, within Mombasa Law Society ranks. She works very closely with MLS and she's a champion for MLS ladies and MLS women. She is the Associate Dean at the University of Nairobi Mombasa campus. And she is an academic extraordinaire. I think everybody who has ever worked with her is able to say what I'm going to say. She is one of the best people to have in your corner, in your team. She champions all ladies. And she's, a, she's an academic giant. Like all women, she's able to multitask, accomplish great things, and to lead us, particularly in this endeavor that we have. Also from the University of Nairobi is Dr. Commissioner Masi Deche, a good friend, an honest friend and colleague. She never hesitates to express her opinion and she's always the most refreshing opinion in the room. She's a PhD in the University of Nairobi and a lecturer too. And she's always seen recently with her students in tow. She's a great teacher. 
uh, I consider her a mentor to myself. And many of us here also consider both Dr. Masi Deche and Dr. Sarah Kinyanjui as their mentors, and in many cases, their saviors. Uh, those of us in academia know that they have supported us and pushed us and worked to enable us to get where we are. So without further ado, allow me to call upon Dr. Commissioner Masi Deche to make known to us our presenter today, Senior Counsel Patricia Nyawi. Dr. Masi, the floor is yours. Uh Thank you, Jackie. Uh, I thought uh, the host would say something, Dr. Sarah, or I just proceed and uh, invite Patricia. I'll be very happy to hear from uh, Dr. Sarah, Dr. Sarah. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you, Jackie, for those uh, kind words. Dr. Deche, we would have been happy to have you speak on our behalf because you're part of us. Um, I'm sorry, for some reason, my camera has been stopped, so I'm not able to turn it on, but allow me just to say one word. Once again, we are, of course, delighted to support Mombasa Law Society, ladies' chapter in this webinar. Mombasa Law Society is a society in its own uh, league. Not only does it support uh, professionals, but it supports you in all ways. And so we are delighted to be a part of you. But allow me also to just share two quotes um, very shortly. One is from uh, Michelle Obama, that we need to do a better job of putting ourselves higher on our to-do list. We need to do a better job of putting ourselves higher on our to-do list. That's Michelle Obama. And from Dolly Parton, <laughs> not a philosopher, but just uh, I found this very interesting, that never get so busy making a living that you forget to make a life. Never get so busy making a living that you forget to make a life. I believe this resonates with, uh, with this series, that we, uh, we endeavor not to make the most of everything and losing um, what matters most making the most of everything, but making sure that an eye on everything does not leave us with nothing. So with that, thank you very much, Jackie. Again, we are delighted to partner with MLS. Over to you, Dr. Dechin. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sarah. I'm shading off these. I wanted to look sophisticated, but they are just complicating my life. Uh, my task is simple. It is to introduce uh, Senior Counsel Patricia Nyaundi. And Patricia is an advocate of the High Court of Kenya. She holds an LLM in human rights from the University of Cape Town, South Africa, and an LLB ONS from the University of Nairobi. Now, uh, from the University of Nairobi, she not only uh, acquired an LLB, but also uh, managed to juggle some classroom romance, as she calls it, and emerged with uh, her husband, uh, Dr. Ken Nyawundi. But uh, back to Patricia, she has vast experience garnered from service in both, pub in both uh, the public and private sector for a, a period of uh, 28 years. She commenced her career as a state counsel in the AG's office then had a short stint as a private practitioner in Eldoret Town, where she championed children's rights through civic education and initiating strategic litigation. Her work in this area uh, inspired her to join FIDA, and she ascended through the ranks uh, at FIDA and eventually served as the executive director between 2008 in 2010, and uh, I'm privileged to have served uh, in the board when she was the ED. During her tenure at FIDA Kenya, the organization was at the forefront in championing for inclusion of women rights provisions in the constitution review process, culminating in the promulgation of a constitution that provides for equal legal status of women. 
She later served as the CEO of the TJRC between 2008 and 2012. And the commission documented historical injustices and gross violations of human rights that occurred in Kenya between December 1963 and February 28, 2008. Thereafter, she served as the commission secretary, uh, CEO of the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights. From 2018, she has served as the regional director of crisis action as a campaign and advocacy. Uh, in 2020, she was conferred the rank of senior counsel. She has professional interest in the area of gender equality, child rights, and women rights. Patricia, as I said, is a wife. Uh, she's been married uh, for long, probably not as long as Elizabeth and the late Philip, but she'll tell us for how long. No, she says it since 20, December 1992. Uh, you can calculate how many years those are. They are blessed with three children. In 2019, May, she became a grandmother. And uh, in her own words, she says that uh, she's a better grandmother than a mother. So let's uh, put our hands together virtually for Senior Council Patricia Nyaundi. Welcome. Uh, thank you very much, Mercy. I must say that uh, if I had met you earlier in life, uh, my, my father probably would have gotten more diary uh, for me if that's the way I was uh, always being introduced. Uh, I really, really want to appreciate uh, MLS for this privilege. Uh, what it has done is uh, ever since Mercy called me up, I have uh, been uh, on an experience of really reflecting on my life and asking myself, what am I about? Uh, and part of that reflection, uh, uh, I am aware of it. Uh, the question is whether I walk conscious uh, of it. I am aware of the fact uh, that this year uh, I, 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 I will begin to describe myself as a 53-year-old uh, African uh, woman, uh, spent most of her life uh, in Kenya. I also acknowledge myself as uh, looking back on my life and how I started uh, really sitting in a place of comfort and saying, I have done the best I could have done uh, with the resources I had at any one time, the knowledge I had, the exposure and um, the, 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 just the, the opportunities uh, that I had. So I'm seated here and saying, I really must thank God uh, that when I think back on my life, uh, I say I do have some regrets, uh, but not, not painful. Uh, I, I think of them as uh, learnings. Uh, I am seated here acknowledging that on this call is uh, Wilfred Konosi, who was the best man at our, our wedding, and saying I am grateful to God uh, that one of the things I tick off as my points of self-actualization uh, and appreciation is the fact that uh, I do have a family, I have children, and now I have uh, grandchildren. And I hope that in the Q&A, I will have license uh, to explore more what that means to me and its contribution uh, to where I am now. Uh, but because I have been guided, that part of this is really for us to be able, it's, it's meant to be really interactive is to say that when I was reflecting on this, uh, I, I felt because I have had an opportunity and a privilege to also live my life uh, in the public space, 
I, 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 the moment I took on the positions at FIDA, at uh, KNCHR and at the Truth Commission, it meant for me, at least on reflection, that the boundaries that one is able to maintain between your private and your public life somewhat collapsed. Uh, and when I was reflecting on this, I said, uh, part of my thinking is that there have been moments when there's been a lot of pain uh, inflicted on me uh, at a family level uh, because of this ambition uh, to move out of what would have been a comfortable you know, uh, zone where I limited myself and placed my primary uh, responsibility to be that to attending to the needs of my family, be they my spouse or uh, my children. But the moment I made a career choice uh, that I would share myself between uh, my, my, my family and my career, uh, they, they are our choices. The other reflection the, that uh, the choices that had to be made and some of them uh, on reflection now, I, I say maybe have caused me substantial pain. The other thing that I have had occasion to reflect on now is that uh, when I started out on life, my, my first moments of consciousness, uh, and and Masi, you know, you are my friend, so I'll rely on you to inbox me directly if I am going over time or if I need some steering. Uh, the, the other reflection I've been having is that uh, isn't life a sequence of repeated second chances? Uh, so when I, I think about how, when I first became conscious of life and how the dominant uh, conversations I was listening to were of what I could not do. You know, I, I, I was a, a girl, so I could not sit like this. There were things that the boys, you know, I, I grew up, my, my mother uh, enrolled, uh, I, I want to say this in a way that I am not flossing, uh, but my mom uh, joined Makerere University back in the day. Uh, so she's, uh, she's an alumnus of Makerere and by association, uh, I'm a child of an alumnus of Makerere. Uh, but when she went to Makerere, uh, within the first months of her joining Makerere, uh, she conceived me. Uh, and so in first year, uh, she was expectant. I think when she went back home for holidays, it was a bit dramatic uh, because her parents were both leaders in church. Uh, and so when she went back to continue her education, uh, I was left with these parents who kind of felt like this is not how they had scripted their lives as religious leaders. Uh, in, in And you know, back then, uh, in the 60s, communities were very tight. So for it to be announced that in the home of Canon Luagula, uh, and back then we were not referred to as children born out of wedlock, uh, we were referred to as illegitimate children. And you can imagine the translation of that in vernacular. So uh, this was my background. So feeling like you were growing up in a dark corner of a very big space, and seeing all these things that other people were able to do, but because of this stain on you, uh, you, you kind of emerged into this space where you were full of limitations. And this was continued uh, when, when then I, I went to, 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 to school. Uh, and back then in the 70s, uh, being reminded that uh, science-oriented courses would be for boys, uh, prepare yourself for a career along the lines of being a teacher, et cetera, et cetera. And the, the turnaround moment for me must have been 
my mother was a teacher at Lenana High School. Uh, I am seated in the car. She is uh, driving uh, to, I don't know where we were going to, within Lenana. And all along, you know, uh, all along, uh, you know, when I, I think within that context, adults keep reminding you of the features that are not pleasant. So the thing that had been repeatedly raised with me is that uh, my big eyes uh, were, were, were not appealing at all. And so I had somehow, I think, walked through life hunched over. And this lady bent over and looked at me in the car and said, what beautiful eyes you have. And this for me was the beginning of the marvel of second chances that uh, just coming to appreciate that life is this marvelous sequencing of seasons and that there is absolutely no season that is permanent in the same way, you know, that here in Kenya, we have the, 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 the wet season and the dry season, long rains, short rains, no rains. Other people have uh, other seasons, summer, winter, autumn, uh, spring, and just marveling and saying, oh my goodness, this for my life translates that yes, I had a season where I was invisible, but look, here I am. Uh, somebody has given me this marvelous opportunity where I can rise up and say, hey, uh, I am this brilliant person. And this really has been the story uh, of my life, God placing along my path. And interestingly, it has always been women in Form 4 uh, going to visit with a friend of mine and her mother looking at me and saying, you know what? if you remain focused, you are going to uh, achieve much uh, in, in life. And again, me waking up because up until this time that she spoke to me uh, in terms of my performance academically, I was closer to the end of the list. And many times, you know, my parents were asking me, uh, what is this investment in school fees that we are undertaking? Uh, my my mom, you know, is a is a straight shooter, so she always reminded me, you know, Patricia, there will always be a market for house helps uh, unless you can pull up your socks. So for this parent to just speak to me and say, look, focus, you are going to do well, uh, that was really really uh, important. Um, to me. So this, the, the, the other thing I, I spent time on reflecting is that it has not been an upward trajectory. Uh, I have had my share of down moments uh, when I have asked myself, should I even show up tomorrow? Should I just fold my bags and retreat? Uh, I, I say now this because this is really personal. And when I said, when, when I was given this opportunity to come and share, I said, let, let me be vulnerable if it's going to help somebody out there. One of the things that has struck me in my journey of life, you know, when I compare myself to that 14 year old girl, 16 year old girl, was completely obsessed with Mills and Boone and about how, you know, there was this idea that when you met the person you would love, your eyes would lock, your heart would throb, your pulse rate, your eyes would, uh, you know, your, your eyes would tear, he would hold you in his sinewing muscles and all the answers to life would be answered. You know, you, you would get all the answers and you would live happily ever after. Of course, the foundation of this had been Cinderella and uh, Sleeping Beauty. And now uh, get into a marriage uh, with somebody who, you know, when we met at uh, college, uh, 
in terms of appearance was the answer to what I was looking around for in terms of uh, the handsome, potential handsomeness uh, of uh, men. Uh, so, so this, he, 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 he ticked the boxes on that. Uh, of course, again, going back to my Mills and Poon, his voice was adequately deep. He's, uh, he's, he, 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 as you know, as much as I can be decent, say he had muscles in all the right places. Uh, and to walk down the aisle to meet this man, uh, pronounce myself that I do. Uh, and then find that the rest of our church was not going to, the rest of our life was not going to be spent at Maxwell Seventh-day Adventist Church. Uh, we had to, you know, move out and fast in Kisumu, then Eldoret, and now in Nairobi, build a life together. Uh, and then get surprised that in my experiences of pregnancy, uh, his participation was limited to occasioning the pregnancy, uh, had limited uh, participation when it came to the children coming forth in this world, uh, the children developing and crying. Uh, and whereas this, to some extent, uh, affected whether or not the jobs I could do, uh, he was, you know, marching forward. So. It really surprised me that uh, the things I was learning about in church, how you share responsibilities in the house uh, and the, the, the role that your husband should be playing. Uh, my ear, you know, really yearning for him to call me honey babe, sweet pies uh, and having him, you know, those who are kissy, uh, if Konosi is still on the call, have him have myself adjust to the fact that my other name was really Aye uh, uh, or Ngoria. Those of you who are kisses will really get uh, the shock to my system that that was. Uh, and then, you know, just doing a reality check and saying for, for as long as I would get stuck in this, so that, that my lesson, you know, in family and getting along with your life and the reality of what this is, is uh, really acknowledging that there is what you read, watch on movies, and then what life is, you know, that this man had signed up for, uh, you know, some conjugal benefits, uh, had signed up for someone who would, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, continue his lineage, uh, had signed up for an in-house cook. And here I was thinking that I had signed up for a broad shoulder upon which I would lie. Uh, and of course, the dominant thing was that we had now bills to pay uh, school children to raise and schools to, you know, people to educate. So I, this for me was like, hey woman, wake up, leave your reality. Uh, so, th so that's another learning. I think the other learning, and this was uh, when beginning to juggle things, was a sister who said to me, my friend, your money must work for you. Uh, as I have said, I looked at my my comrade and the things he had signed up, my ambitions, and just getting to learn if I was going to achieve half the things that I thought I was here to achieve, I better make my money work for me. Uh, so this meant, you know, learning when I am engaging a house help. I am not going to get those house helps who cost me 3000 in terms of cash, but in terms of the backup of the work that I am going to have to do on their behalf, it means I am completely paralyzed. 
uh, those of you who have house helps, you know those ones who will ask you every day of the week, Mami leo tutapika nini? Those who in the morning, as you are rushing out to the press conference, announce uh, if like me, you recruit substantially from Western and they'll say, Mami leo kuna mpoka. And what she's saying really is that there is no chicken. Uh, there is kuma, but she has declared that there is no poka. Hakuna mafuta ya poka, hakuna mkate, hakuna masiwa. And you're meant to be preparing for what you think is this nation-saving press conference. So I have learned that money must work for you. I have also learned that I have got to take care of my issues, organize myself, deal with my demons before I show up publicly. I think one of the, my life saving moments was when I was able to look in the mirror and really talk to myself and say, this is who you are woman. And really acknowledge that by the way, Patricia, learn to accept you are not perfect. Out there, especially when I took up, I took upon myself these public roles, uh, got into that public space. And every time, you know, people are celebrating you and saying, oh, ED, CEO, brr, brr, you know, newspapers are running features on you and you are allowing that what is publicly palatable, you know, to be shared, you know, when a journalist comes and says, let's do an interview. So you say, yeah, this is what the public can take. But, and this is why for me, family was so important. There is the real you. Uh, so there is, I mean, if Ken were to share with people, the woman he deals with, the woman who the whole week, he is reminding, go and pay this bill, pay water, pay electricity. Uh, children, this book needs to be bought. This is, this is me. Uh, I forget important dates sometimes. I show up late uh, sometimes to like a child's prize giving day. They were meant for some reason to show up as Cinderella. What is that even? Where am I going to get a fairy wand? And things like those. So just to begin to acknowledge, oh my goodness, I'm not perfect. It's nobody else's fault. That's just me. That's just how I am. And the moment I learned I was not perfect, I'm going to fail people, to learn the power of the word sorry, to learn the power of having a support system, people who can step in for you. And one of the, I'm moving all over the place because I am excited, like maybe we can have a, 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 an engagement here. For me, the other big thing was to have in my circle of friends, friends who can accommodate my rubbish. These other things that even this man with whom we are one flesh can probably not take. A friend, you know, like Jane Onyango, who can take my tears, whom I can sit with, and she is not overwhelmed uh, that this is the CEO of KNCHR breaking down and crying uh, and completely overwhelmed that her children are falling apart and I can actually share this with her. She does not have the answers, uh, but she can calmly take a sip of dawa. She's actually going to pay the bill for it and offer me two samosas uh, and tell me, okay, so what are you going to do about this? Uh, and I can leave that conversation feeling like I have been allowed to be vulnerable. It's safe, it's okay. Uh, I can even be stupid uh, because part of the challenge with uh, 
rising to what people say you are now successful uh you know i i must confess i didn't take my humility medicine this morning uh the doctor had prescribed one pill per day so for some reason i forgot to take it this morning so i am i i must confess like for me when i was conferred senior counsel i was like who would have known you know that this kagal who was raised and the first school she went to was nahayaka deb where to enter i had to stretch my arm over this ear and you know confirm that it could touch the ear and it couldn't and that the, the teacher told me not to come back the next day who would have ever told me that then i would get conferred you know senior counsel so i'm seated here on 9th april you know feeling like man damn i am being successful i have been successful but acknowledging that with that tag of success comes this life of you've got to show up publicly like you've got it all together you know you 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 can't show up you know mercy when we used to sit with in the boardroom with her at feeder there was a like a word she liked using called i think madoganyos you can't show up with your madoganyos publicly uh, and yet you have these uh, ma, 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 whatever they are. So I have learned nothing serves you better than having a circle of friends that really allows you to be yourself. And they, 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 they and they're also your, 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 honest i have learned the other thing is you've got to really open yourself up to criticism to really allow yourself for people to call you in and say way hiyo ilikuwa ujinga that that's foolish you can't do that you cannot uh, uh, so for instance uh, when uh, in my younger days uh we got it into our heads to call a sex boycott uh and my classmate Nancy can Kangede you I've seen your question how do you deal with Ken's issues so this for me is an example of how when you take on this public life you kind of blur the boundaries of is there private and public can you say this is me as fita see you're calling the sex boycott when i got home that day you know can ask me hiyo ni nini umesema lakini what is that you know uh, you've got to always remember that uh, you you are part of a family so what are people thinking uh, you know uh, the 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 fine print there was mimi <laughs> sinyimwi so Hey, but let me not sidetrack this is my problem i get into other things so this really was an example of i'm seated there you know my my my, my husband was not amused uh because and his friends were texting him as we were sitting together and saying aki wewe utapata leo kweli uh and i'm seated there you know like on best behavior like uh meanwhile the colleagues we had called the sex boycott are like lining up the things we are going to do tomorrow where we are showing up this this interview we are going to say this we are calling on what and i'm seated here uh my rubber has hit the road kimeumana uh and i'm asking myself hey <laughs> nancy can you get off the call so <laughs> so to cut a long story short this for me was a really a big lesson that when you are in the public space i don't think the there is a difference between your public and your private life and to always be conscious of that that to me was a great great awakening a great lesson uh of how 
the, the responsibility uh, that comes with success, the responsibility I think that comes with success. The final thing that I will share, I think, is to the, just the realization that you will have some some moments when you ask yourself, can I really come out? I mean, do I just fold my bags and put a stop to this? And I think for me, the moment when this happened was uh, when we lost our second child. Uh, because you would think that uh, when you are successful, because God wants to keep you being successful, he will shield you from some of these things that happen that take away your essence. And for me, it was the loss of our second child. I, I really sat for a number of months and said, does life continue? Does, is there anything left uh, after life continues? after you, you suffer some, some things. For me, it was the, the loss of a relative. I have spoken to other people and it has been the loss of a job. For some people, it has been uh, some terminal disease. You know, so there are things that just come and shake your universe. This was mine. Uh, it shook my universe. Those who were close to me at that time tell me I became a shell. It happened to me at a time when I was at KNCHR and my style of leadership then, those with whom I worked was, I was this high energy, high voltage, take no nonsense kind of leader. Uh, you know, eh, full of adrenaline, waking up every morning charged with purpose. You know, we were, you know, making headlines and et cetera, et cetera, as the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights. Uh, and then this happened. And I must say the thing that got me back uh, was just this feeling that, hey, but I have a contribution to make. Uh, my lessons that I want to share from that earth shaking thing that changed my life was that sometimes when that happens to you, you need a change of scene. So for me, it meant I had to leave the National Commission on Human Rights because in that space at that time, I felt it was so connected to my daughter then and I was not going to outlive it. But the beautiful thing that the loss of our daughter did to me is that it, it taught me moving forward that you must have a hierarchy of things that cause you to collapse. Uh, before we lost our daughter, I think for me, everything used to make me collapse. My husband forgets my birthday, it's the end of the world. My husband forgets anniversary, it's the end of the world. Someone cuts traffic in front of me, it's the end of the world. Uh, a board member or a commissioner uh, speaks hard words. Those of you who've served in institutions where there's a board, there's a CEO, there's a secretariat, sometimes there are those tensions and you feel like, oh, the world has ended. That kind of loss, you know, told me there mu you must have a hierarchy of things that shake your world. And for me, you know, there's this book that says, stop sweating the small stuff. Not everything affects the price of fuel. So don't, don't allow every bird that lands on your shoulder to build a nest. Uh, so I, I, this for me was the thing I took out of that to say, God willing, God have mercy on me that I never have to say that there's something greater than losing a loved one. 
But I thank God uh, because the other thing I should have said at the outset of this is something that has kept me with my two feet on the ground is my faith in God. The fact that I made a decision to say I, I, I am a believer. And so to be able to look in every darkness that comes into my life, to be able to look in every darkness and say, ah, what can I take from this? And that was that one lesson to say, thank you that from this, I am able to take the fact that you can always rebuild, even when you feel like the, you know, the whole building collapsed on you. You can always rebuild. I think I'm a testament of that, uh, you know, that uh, life is not just this, you know, those graphs we used to do in uh, mathematics, a graph that is completely on an upward trajectory, you know, and then hits top. My experience is that you are even stronger. You are even stronger for the moments in your life that you have fallen down on your face, sometimes even publicly. You know, I have numerous failings that have been private, no one knows about. Those have not built me as much as when I have failed publicly. And then two, three months, one year, I'm able to look back and say, oh my goodness, I am not at my place of failing. Uh, I have actually emerged from that, yes, with my scars, hey, but I am ready to take on Congestina and wrestle from her the belt of a champion boxer. So thank you very much, colleagues. I hope that I have laid the basis of what can be uh, a, a, a conversation for all of us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Senior Council. I mean, from the comments on the chat box, you have really done justice to this subject. Thank you for allowing us in. Thank you for sharing the the, the highs and the lows of your life. And thank you for showing, uh, sharing with us uh, what has inspired you, what keeps you going, and uh, what has brought you to where you are today. I think to start off the conversation, I would like to ask my colleague, uh, our Secretary General at MLS, Mary Kiruruti, probably to uh, kick off or ask the questions and uh, uh, the first three questions, and then we can take the discussion from there. SG? Thank you, Jackie. Um, that was a very lovely talk. I, I've, I've been laughing. I think my neighbors here must be wondering if today I'm insane just because of how I've been laughing. It's just uh, thank you for your vulnerability and just your candidness. Um, we have uh, three questions here. We have four on the Q&A. Maybe we can go for three. Uh, the first uh, anonymous attendee asks, uh, what is your motivation for living? That's the first question. Then the second, we have a senior, uh, Dor Dorcas Kita. She asks, how have you dealt with the issue of uh, black tax? And uh, the third will be, uh, is from uh, Nancy Kanyeda. She says, well done, my classmate. How, how do you deal with Ken's issues and or messes when you have to deal, which you have to deal with alongside yours? SG, take, yeah. the, the, take the fourth one as well. Because yeah, take the, uh, take the fourth one also. Just a minute. Uh, the fourth one is also from Nancy. She says, I know you are a Christian. How do you wear your Christianity so well without being overbearing? Yes, those are four questions. Perhaps you can go with those and then you can pull it the others. Thank you. Uh, I'll start with Ken's issues and uh, messes. So uh, those, those of you who know my Ken, I know there are many Kens out there, but then there is my Ken. Uh, 
he has also been a public figure. So when we talk about uh, messes, you know, for, for some, some of my friends, I keep telling them, you know, you're lucky that your issue is personal. So if he has had a clan day, you know, it's between the two of you, maybe family, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I, 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 as a family, we've had to deal with where our issues are also public. So for instance, when my husband served at the IEC, and then there was the scandal around, uh, you know, the, the chicken gate, uh, whether the commissioners at IEC had eaten chicken. Uh, at that time, not as now, I was also quite active on Facebook. Uh, and therefore, you know, people were, you know, connecting, making that connection that this is Ken Nyaundi, his wife is here. Those of you who know me will know that where, whereas I'm married in Kisi, I was actually born in Western. So chicken is a very sensitive subject to me. It's a favorite dish. Uh, so when people decided to call this scandal at IEC Chicken Gate, I took it very personally. Uh, but the point is that many times uh, what I have seen in our lives with my husband is that he will be doing his things out there and then they, they come back to, to sit on us. Uh, I have sat on panels where I am looking for a job, you know, as Patricia Nyaundi and the, the panelists are you know, completely drowned in the fact that I am the wife of Ken Nyaundi, and because I'm the wife of Ken Nyaundi, that means X, Y, Z, which really means I am not the best candidate uh, for the job. So, so this can be, uh, to say the least, uh, quite frustrating. Uh, what I have found very useful for me is to say, to myself repeatedly that before he was any of these things, uh, when he was just in Hall 11 uh, with one pair of shoes, I chose him as the man I love. You know, when he persuaded me that he preferred to walk even very long distances. And later I learned it's because sometimes he could not raise fare. Uh, I had chosen to love this man. And like me, I am conscious that he will make mistakes. I have heard people who have taken the trouble of, uh, okay. I have heard people who have, uh, sorry, that was my son and his friend who are uh, saying hi to me. So I have had people who take the trouble of, you know, uh, texting me and saying, you know, by the way, Patricia, uh, I don't mean to hurt you, but just so that you know, I think Ken is having this kind of improper engagement with a particular lady whom they name. I have one principle that guides my life. If Ken has taken the trouble to conceal something from me. Uh, I will not make it my business to unearth it. Uh, I am not true when it comes to my husband's life. If he has taken the trouble to conceal it from me, uh, I save myself uh, many things by not investigating. I have also made the very conscious and deliberate decision to say until death do us part. Uh, the other thing that while working at FIDA re really opened my eyes to is that really, 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 it's good that our houses are built with ceilings or roofs uh, because then you cannot, you know, see what is going on in someone else's, you know, house. So 
I, I really say to myself, uh, what goes on under the roof of uh, Ken and Patricia Nyaundi is just a sampling of what is going around the entire universe. And it is really my decision whether I want to entertain people with what is going on under my roof or whether I deal with it. So, you know, with my, my husband, we have had occasions when, and, and this is really my strong belief that unless we resolve it as the two of us, it serves no useful purpose to entertain the rest of the universe. Uh, with what can be going on. Uh, and then uh, the, the other thing that has, I think, helped us is at the end of the day, to the rest of the world, he could be Dr. Ken Nyaundi. To the rest of the world, I can be senior counsel. But to the two of us, he is Ken. And to him, I am Patricia. And the one thing he is looking for to me for is to affirm him and that when he comes home, this is the one woman who can take him as he is, you know, with all, because out there, uh, and this has also been my experience, is that people take you and embrace you for your perfection, for your positive attributes, to the extent that you are able to help them achieve their goals. It is only your spouse, it is only your children who can embrace you. This is my experience. Even when they are having to change your diaper, these are the only people who will come back to you and say, you are our mom, you are, you are my husband. Ken expects that when he has taken a beating, you know, like for instance, he attended this interview for IEBC. And, you know, those of you who have sought public office, you will know that now in Kenya, even when you show up for an interview, some people take this as an opportunity to really throw mud at you and uh, not take responsibility for whether or not this is true. So my husband showed up for an interview at IBC and didn't they shred him to pieces. And, you know, apart from Mills and Boone, I had never really appreciated what it means to hug somebody and be there for somebody. And as we walked out, because I had accompanied him, to the interview, I was seated there because of course here I was saying, if he gets this position, I am the one who's going to be the wife of a commissioner. So let me start, you know, positioning myself for the benefits that come with this. But one we shred to pieces and I held his hand, we got home and I really hugged him and held him. And I felt that in that moment, we communicated to each other that at the end of the day, regardless of how people view us out there, this is the thing we are to each other. You are my primary support, which is not to say that the son of man uh, has been, or me as the daughter of man, have been perfect to each other, or that our relationship has uh, been perfect. Uh, there are times I have actually drafted a divorce petition you know, in my mind, uh, complete with grounds of cruelty. Uh, but I have remembered this guy in a box persuading me. And that's what has kept our marriage alive. Just beginning thinking how we began. So I accept that Ken will have messes. I accept that he has issues. I accept and I will never expect of him to be imperfect uh, because assuming that we are all above 18, part of my responsibility as his wife is really that I am that one human being who gets to see him without those expensive suits that the rest of you see him in and admire him for. I get to see him raw and I know right now the projection of his belly. 
he also gets to see me uh, without, you know, some of this fashion, uh, you know, high level. Right now I'm dressing in kitenges. You know, he gets to see me without these bellies, uh, these, uh, you know, kitenges, you know. And he is aware of the fallen heroes. He sees them. You know, the rest of you really say, wow, you don't even look like a grandmother. He actually knows this woman is truly a grandmother. I am not the woman he met in 1992, at, actually in 1987 uh, at Box, when some parts of my body looked like Mapera's, you know? Uh, and, you know, so really things have changed. And part of my journey and my stability in family is just appreciating that in this space, uh, we must embrace this. This is a person whom I must socialize to accept me with my imperfections. And I am glad uh, that, well, it's, it's not, I am not suggesting that at a hundred percent he's accepting my imperfections or I am accepting his imperfections at a hundred percent. But I think uh, that does help us, the fact that uh, he accepts. Uh, Dorcas, I have no idea what black tax is, educate me. What is my motivation for living? What gets me to wake up? Uh, I feel it is just this idea of if I show up again today, I just might win. This, this is how I wake up. I wake up feeling like I just might, I just might win again. Uh, because as I, I said to you, for, for me, until my teenagehood, I just felt like I'm overwhelmed. I'm not going to make it uh, within the closed family where I should have been getting my encouragement, people always reminded me that I was illegitimate. My paternal grandmother actually one time in my hearing said to some people who are around her that this is the one who made my son get married to that woman. You know, so like I, I had this feeling of not, not being wanted, not 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 really being an option, you know, like ah, I'm a letter to. So I I the the moment that at some point in my life I just started having this sense of the moment I show up, every time I show up, there's a chance of winning, has really energized me. When I wake up, I'm like, okay. For sure, I failed. On that one, I failed flat. I, I, I couldn't have done it. Then I remind myself, but hey, you are the same woman who was able to achieve this. So just show up. Just by showing up, uh, you are able to achieve, etc., uh, uh, etc. Et okay. Thank you. Now I understand what black tax is. Tax, historical injustices is all those michangos and support for relatives. So uh, very briefly, somebody uh, tell me if I'm shooting my time. Uh, Please go ahead, uh, senior counsel. Yeah. So this really is the issue. The, the way I have helped myself is I have said, uh, this is the limit of my contribution this month because I'm still on salary. So I, I say per month, I am going to give so much. The only people who are allowed to bust my bank are my parents, not even my siblings. My parents and my children likely. Those are the ones whom I can step out of my limits. Uh, but the, for the rest of the universe, if I have said I am only giving 20,000 to weddings, to funerals, to medical emergencies, once I hit 20,000, 
if it can't wait for next month, then I will pass. Because part of the other thing I have learned uh, in my life is talk about your issues. As I have said, I have found it's very good to have a friend whose shoulder is made of absorbent material so can take all my tears and absorb my shocks. So the moment I started opening up, I, I want to respond to Ivy. Uh, I, I, I have, as I said, three children. They are now all adolescents. And at some point in their lives, you know, they, they just were at the diametric opposites of the children I had visualized and the children I was living with were completely different day and night. And I kept asking myself, Haya, did somebody come in the middle of the night and take away my, 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 my children? Who are these I'm living with? And then it didn't help. It didn't help that around me, there were these conversations that were, if you had been a more present mom, your children would not be where they are now. If you had, if you had, if you had, uh, your children would not have mentioned. And what saved me was I sat down with a friend and I asked her, hey, this is my situation. Uh, here I am. I, I, I felt like I am doing very well. Uh, I mean, how many people can tick off being CEO in succession? Uh, but uh, the, 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 the Kenyan national checklist on successful parenting has me at 5% complete fail and uh, the returns are being made to Magoha, help. Uh, and this friend asked me, so what's going on? And we shared our experiences. And I said to her, you mean you too? I thought you were even a perfect uh, parent. And it's then what really was a life-changing moment for me was to ac accept that we raise our children and our children make choices. And sometimes the choices our children make don't align with, you know, like, so here I am, uh, SDA. Those of you who know me will know that I actually have the key to the church. I open the church, I close it. Uh, the church, you know, you know, knows that I am present uh, for the church. Uh, you can add to my title MC, meaning Mama Church. So for me now, and my husband has also served as an elder uh, of the same church. So my expectation was that two SDAs would conceive an SDA child. Uh, this, this was my understanding of genetics. So when my children, as they begin making decisions, don't want to wake up to go to church, start consuming substances that should not be consumed by SDAs. I was completely confused. And not only are they consuming these substances, but it is now known by other Adventists in good and regular standing. When your child, a child born by two SDAs, gives you a grandchild whom you're celebrating. But the SDA protocol is that you first get married and then you get these children. Now your child who has been, con yes, this saw your children, your child who has been conceived by two SDAs goes, gets another child pregnant, then they get a grandchild and you're meant to be leading devotion. You tell me how the center of your earth does not shift and you start asking yourself what page of the manual did i not read or did i read and did i not understand what i i think for me my great lesson is you cannot live your life on some template 
some template that has been created by other people who are not bold enough to share with us their challenges. Some template by people who only are showing us their successes and not showing us their challenges. So I, what has been my redeeming feature has been to say, even as I sit upright and say, I am an SDA in good and regular standing, God knows I have my failings. And I should also be prepared to accept my children will have failings and will have challenges. I have got to, I don't want to summonize this, but I have also got to be prepared to show up as the sinner that I am and relate to people as the sinner as I am. So what does that mean for mom guilt? As far as I'm concerned, it doesn't exist. I am not going to carry around people's messes, okay? If my kids are doing things that are causing them pain, hey, this is when I say, hallelujah, I am not going to be carrying around people's, uh, you know, people's, and, and I have had to let my children know this, that by the way, I have done what I could do for you. To Mesaidiana, what to Mesoma, fees is being paid. Uh, but Ikifika Hapa, please, please, please. After all, even if I used to show up late for uh, these things that teachers terrorize us with, uh, so that, I mean, in modern day, I felt like it is not just my children who are in school. At one time, I had to tell the teachers at my daughter's school, can you please give me an admission number? Because I am here every week, every week you are calling me here and not just for some uh, session where I can sit quietly and figure out the other things in my life. You're calling me here for sessions that demand my 100% engagement. Can you give me an admission number into this school and uniform? Just so that I know that I am also, uh, I, I, I also feel uh, we, we are in, we, we, I, I also feel I'm, I'm part of this because I feel like you're pulling me into this, but I am not a part of this. So, just make me clear. So I feel like in the way that we are forced really to parent nowadays, no one can come back to you and say, you are not present in your children's life. Uh, with my daughter, we laugh about it. And I say, every time she's uh, trying to, to, you know, uh, re, re, you know, come to me at, you know, you owe me on this one. I always tell her, by the way, book an appointment, show up on the Oprah Winfrey show and talk about your experiences with this mother. But I'm moving on. I'm really moving up on. Uh, so this for, for me has been a big learning to also be able to step out of my children's lives and say, after all, they are children who have grown up minus parents and they're hacking it. So you are even lucky that you have a bad parent uh, in my form and shape. Celebrate that. Celebrate that you have a parent and move on. Because for those of us in our adult life, if we talk as legal practitioners, in offices, you know, you will always say, the reason I lost that case is because in our office, I don't know what was happening. If you're in employment, your boss will be like, tell me another story. You are the one who was in court on that day. You lost the case. So whether or not this firm, we've not set up for Zoom calls, that's an issue. Show up on Zoom calls, make your submissions. Don't start telling me that you didn't have a camera a webcam on your laptop, make your submissions on, on Zoom. So I, I feel one of the, my points of liberation has been to be able to detach myself 
uh, from some of these things. And I feel when I reflect on it is that, yes, these are the, I, I am responsible for bringing them onto planet Earth. But I, I think what's going, especially for us women, what's going to help us to maintain our sobriety is to say that in, in life, uh, you've got to also to be prepared to just say, what's my, def de what's my, def what's, sorry, how do I self-define who I, who am I? Okay. And that's why uh, I feel the moment you self-define. Uh, so for instance, I self-define as a 53 year old woman who lives her life as though she's an 18 year old girl. And everything else has got to fit into that, my self definition that really, yes, I acknowledge that I am growing older, but in terms of how I am ready to seize opportunities, how I am ready to take on new challenges, how I am ready to grab at what I keep calling the next chance that life offers me. I do this with the zeal and the foolishness of an 18 year old who says, ha, this is possible. Let me try it, okay? But now, of course, because I'm 53, I move slower. I probably have more things. I am pulling along. So things that slow me down. So. Whereas if I was maybe 19, if the opportunity that came up was in whatever part of the globe, I would just pack my little suitcase and run off. Now I've got to think and say, can I, can Ken really survive without me in Kenya for an extended period? Uh, so then maybe I'm no longer thinking about opportunities outside of Kenya, opportunities outside of maybe even Nairobi you know, but for sure I am, you know, and maybe this is why God gave me big eyes. I am still, you know, looking at the world with my eyes wide open and saying, is there something new out there for a 53 year old woman like me to jump onto? Yeah. Uh, thanks, Celia Castle. I think you've more or less to tackle the question that has been raised by the anonymous attendee about jumping right back in. And, uh, but then I'd want to probably spin it off and because it's an important issue and we probably would want to hear your take on it. The aspect of, I think what we call the imposter syndrome. Um, we ladies are not either being ready to step up when we should or feeling we're not qualified to attend to a particular issue or task position because of what we feel is we need to acquire more uh, more education or more qualifications or more something else. Yeah, that imposter syndrome really sinks in like one month into a new job, you're like, hey, those things I said on my CV and the things that are coming on my desk, Kunavile. Uh, uh, but so this, this really is, my learning in life, especially, and I think a number of us who are on the call uh, have undergone our legal training. Uh, so, so we know that really law, the successful practice about law is not knowing everything at the outset, you know, uh, but knowing where to find it, you know, like, <laughs> So I don't know, when I used to have my private practice, sometimes you're seated across your client, they're telling you things and you're like, hey, let me struggle to maintain a straight face so that they know that I'm really not clear on the law on this particular one. What I learned is take notes rigorously Take every point so that later, after the client has gone, you now sweat it out and you understand. And my experience was that I always figured it out. And this also is my learning that 
uh, again, having not swallowed my humility pill this morning, I can say that I am confident that I have the intellectual muscle to deal with anything that life throws my way, unless it's in Russian. But I learned the other day that on Google, that Google even translates automatically. So now language is not even a barrier. So th these, I, this, this is how I approach. If I am persuaded that I can't do this thing, I don't venture there. But if the thing excites me, uh, I don't want to say fake it until you make it, but I want to say something close to that. That I have learned, and maybe it's because of my stature, that sometimes because of my height limitation, it takes time for people to notice I am in the room. And that gives me time to familiarize myself with things. And then I get into my groove uh, because I tell myself, if I survived law at University of Nairobi, where people used to take the law report, remove it from the shelf and take it to a different place so that you will never find that, that law report. You will never find that journal. If I graduated from that kind of learning environment, in this age when information is at our fingertips, really, I, I think it is, it is in human nature and, and that's how you get the adrenaline going to, to, to and you know, those, those motivational speakers who always tell us, I started my poultry project of uh, 3000 chicken with only a feather. And now I have these 3000 broilers. You know, what they keep telling us is your responsibility is, can you just show up? Can you just show up? And this, this really has been my lesson in life. Just show up, show up. And, you know, I, I keep having conversations with myself. I, I, have, I have these struggles, uh, but what I have learned, there are always two voices. There's that voice that tells you, hey, you, Patricia, you are way out of your depth. Then there's another voice that tells you, take it in little bites, in little pieces, you'll get this done. And like I said, my other big learning is just get a support system around you. So I have found there is nothing as big as the power of consultation. Quickly ask somebody, what are these, uh, uh, what is this particular principle? What is this? Like now I just asked, what is black tax? Uh, some of us, we've been socialized that if you ask, it means you're foolish. Uh, yes, I was foolish. Everyone else on the call knew what black tax was. But so what if I was foolish? I'm still alive. I asked, I've been told, if you're with me on my next Zoom call webinar, I'll be there talking like I have known about black tax for my whole 53 years, yet I just knew about it on 9th of April. So uh, I have never shied off from asking. And I think sometimes this is why the imposter syndrome weighs down on us. We don't ask for help when we could ask for it. Uh, someone has told us it's, it's better to be intimidated in your corner, shy. Uh, I, I feel it's better for you to show up you know, like people are asking themselves, even Patricia has asked to be chief justice of Kenya. Is she crazy? If I really felt that this is a position I can serve in, I would actually would have gone ahead and applied. Uh, because what, and sorry, Jackie, this will be my last comment. What I have come to appreciate over time is that, People are so wrong. You cannot allow people who don't know the half of your story 
to be the ones who make decisions on your worth and your potential and your capabilities. You know, people don't even know the struggles, the things you've overcome. People don't have no inkling of the things you've been able to do just to get you to pass your law degree, just to get you to pass Kenya School of Law. They have no idea what that took. And then they're here, you know, offering opinions on you, you know, and then you are favoring them by saying, Yenyewe, if Jackie has said, I can't apply to be a commissioner, let me not. If Jackie has said, I shouldn't be thinking of becoming a chairperson, I should not. Uh, I, I think the homework we can take is how many people who have listened to other people are able to sit and tell themselves, I'm successful. Yeah, so Asante. Gosh, thank you so much, uh, Senior Council. I, to the anonymous attendee, the short answer is just show up and uh, I mean, ask, consult, and do all the necessary things to find out what you need to do to, to succeed in, your, um, in whatever um, assignments that you're going to find along the way. And now, um, Senior Council, there's a last question um, that was posted here by Eunice Lumalas, and I think I want to consider it within the context of the relationship we have within ourselves as women, with different, um, you know, different characteristics, different qualities, different backgrounds, and uh, I presume what you is trying to uh, point out to is the feeling by single women that uh, the married women tend to dominate their conversations with, uh, oh, my husband this, my husband that, my husband the other. And uh, I don't know whether you've ever had uh, anybody raise that up with you or whether it is an issue, but uh, please just talk to us about it. And uh, within the context, the wider context of the relationship uh, between and women of different backgrounds and categories and uh, you know, interests and civil status as Eunice has pointed out. Um, first of all, uh, again, this is someone who didn't take her humility pill is you can't blame us. These husbands, they are just wow. So allow us, allow us. I mean, really, it's like people went to Alliance. We allow them, you know, they keep saying at Alliance. So allow those of us who have these husbands to also talk about them. Okay, but having said that on a more serious note, um, there are many reasons our husbands will come up in our conversations. And I think one of the most profound is that it's a door opener. It helps people relax. It warms people up to you in some spaces. In some spaces I have seen, one time I appeared before the Kadi and he asked me, are you even married? And when I said, yes, I am, then he allowed me to proceed with the matter. So in, in our African context, sometimes just saying, I am a married woman. When I worked as the FIDA CEO, when I would go for some of these meetings, uh, the, 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 some of the people we were talking to would lean in when I said, Mrs. Patricia Nyaundi. Yani uko na buwana? I thought you were single, blah, 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 blah. So sometimes we use it that way. Like, I want people to be comfortable. I want people to be relaxed. Sometimes our husbands are on the calls. Sometimes they're within hearing distance. We want to affirm them. Like, uh, even outside the house, people know I am your wife and I am proud of being your wife. So it's part of the love language. When Ken gets feedback from some of you who are on this call and <clears throat> hint, hint, 
And some of you who are on this call, text Ken and say, wow, your wife really loves you. Your wife really respects you. Your wife really honors you. You earn me some bonga points. So I'm also looking for bonga points. So I'm mentioning him so that my relationship with him, he also gets to appreciate that in these public spaces, I do honor him and I do respect him. But in the grand scheme of things, what I have come to appreciate is that married or not, this is not what defines what it is that we have to offer to the world. When we, when we come to these spaces where much is expected of us, it's not the fact that you're married or not that determines what we can expect of you, what you're offering us. I find sometimes, you know, those of us who are married will start saying and cheating ourselves out of positions by saying, oh, I, I, I'm, I'm unable to, you know, uh, avail myself for this meeting because this is what. Uh, in my own experience, what I have found is I need to socialize my husband that he now shares me with the public, you know? So in the same way that I am his wife, you know, crisis action expects that I am working for them from nine to six. So nine to six, yes, I'm Mrs. Nyaundi, but I'm an employee of crisis action. Something that our single sisters that might not be their struggle, isn't it? Uh, the moment they show up to work or wherever, they are not thinking, oh, uh, Ken likes his Uji, immediately he gets home and that Uji should be made by me and given to, to him by me, you know? So that's not something uh, that some other people would be thinking. So I've had several conversations uh, with my sisters, both married and unmarried. And the conclusion really is that it is really upon us as women to stop using this either as a crutch or as a button. And especially for us as women, you know, we should be at the front, forefront of uh, opening spaces for women regardless of their marital their, their 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 marital status wow um i have really enjoyed um, participating in this webinar for once actually i think this is the first webinar i've been in and i forgot to even ask a question i was uh, doubled up in laughter most of the time i really think that uh, patricia you have a fantastic sense of humor and a way with words that drives the point home. I think for me, what will be my take home today is that I think we need to leave that humility pill at home and be ready to share with our fellow women, our experiences, um, good and bad, and uh, even what has been rough and what has been easy and also take the time to thank God because uh, I think for most of us, we have a strong foundation in God, if not all of us. And thank God for the successes that he has given to us. Um, Patricia, I don't think I can be able to adequately express the appreciation of the members of the MLS ladies chapter. Um, I would want to ask you to give us your parting shot. If we didn't get anything at all, what would you want us to take away from your presentation today? Uh, <laughs> this is what you prepare for then when you're asked to deliver it, you are unable to. But I, I think the big thing is let's show up, always uh, just keep showing up as women and acknowledging that the moment we show up, the universe aligns with us. And uh, we find that because we showed up with a desire burning in our hearts, the universe aligns in our favor. And uh, like me who has not swallowed that humility pill today, you're able to say, here is somebody who had the distinction of being on her report cards, the teachers saying, 
average, average, average. And now here she is. Ha! Lo and behold, senior counsel, just by virtue of showing up. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, senior counsel. Thank you for showing up because your showing up has been the fodder for what we have learned this afternoon. Um, we could even go on and on and on. There are so many things that I've loved to ask you. And as you can see, there's that request and I hope you will honor it. And we are going to still channel it through Dr. Commissioner Masideche that you please show up uh, once again and share a lot more about your experience because we want to know, I mean, so many other things than, uh, other than what you have shared with us. But today has been raw, it has been real and uh, it has been the real deal. And uh, we can truly say that we will walk away knowing something we didn't know before we started uh, the day. Um, I would want to at least recognize the, uh, the presence of our coast rep and that is uh, Riziki Mukule. Um, I also saw, and I don't know whether she's still online, the Honorable Lady Justice uh, Mwangi Njoki. I also saw Dr. Uh, Moza uh, Jadid. I saw Anakunuche. I saw Lea Kigwata. I saw Coco. Coco has been very participatory today, and our chair of FIDA, Nancy Kangede. Um, but I want to give the official vote of thanks to the chair of the Mombasa Law Society, Mrs. Christine Kipsa. Um, thank you, Jacqueline. Um, I'm, I'm not able to start my video, so allow me to speak um, this way. I take this opportunity to appreciate Mombasa Law Society through the leadership of Matthew Nyambena and the entire council. And also, recognize the Mombasa Ladies Chapter led by Jacqueline, Dr. Sarah Kinyanjui, Dr. Masin Deche, and others who are organizing this uh, Ladies Series. It is very enriching to see in this second session we have gotten a speaker who has really enriched us in the most practical way. And I want to appreciate each and every person who was able to log in. And I'm sure you'll be able to share the hashtag of show up because we want to encourage people. We want to encourage the young generation to realize that their potential is not dependent on the circumstances, but you making the bold step of taking the action. I'm speaking like this because uh, this afternoon I received uh, a notice postponing the, the bar examination and many young advocates uh, to be as really discouraged. But I'm sure we'll share this right up today and really encourage someone. So thank you, Patricia, for this uh, wonderful presentation. Indeed, we are we are honored to have you. And as many have said, we welcome you back as, a, as our next speaker next time. Also, we want to appreciate University of Nairobi for this partnership, for hosting us. And the way Dr. Sarah Kinyanjui, who is a director, the way she's helping us, the way she's coordinating, even getting us good speakers. I just want to say that we appreciate the University of Nairobi, Mombasa campus. We also want to appreciate the other ladies because I know there are ladies who are not from MLS chapter who have joined from other regions in this country that you should not get tired. You should always um, get the poster and join us because we want to learn and we are, every day we are appreciating that we have wealth of knowledge and information that is uh, with ladies who have been in this profession for a long time. 
So just be on the lookout for the next uh, speaker that we have. I've seen people saying, adopt me, uh, take me. Yes, that is the kind of feeling we want. We want to be having that kind of sisterhood where we appreciate each other. Yes, there's competition, but there is room for us to grow, room for us to pull ourselves up and hold hands with others. So we, with, with that, I want to leave you with a verse in the Bible. That is Psalms 1, where it says that whatever she does or whatever it does prospers. Why? Because the man or woman of God meditates on the word of God day and night. And Patricia has kept on uh, referring to the word of God, to, to God, and there's no other option other than realizing that without God, we can do nothing. So ladies, let's show up, pray to God, and the space uh, out there is not for anyone. It is for you, get it. So thank you so much, panelists, and everyone who has come, and may God really bless you. I uh, don't know whether Jackie I should pray. Um, okay, well, I'll give you an opportunity to pray because there's just one person or one class of people I think we also need to recognize. Yes. Allow me to do so because I saw Zebedi Ongoya. I think he's here representing our counterparts, the men. And I also saw that there were some, I think I saw Wilfred or somebody, some other gentlemen who are present on the call as well. So um, please know that you're also welcome and you can join us for the conversations that we are continuing to do so. And because I had not mentioned this to senior counsel, I don't know whether you have anything to say to the gentleman or we can leave that for the next time. Uh, only just to recognize Konosi I had done it earlier. He was the best man uh, at our wedding. So I think that's an information that this ship is solid. He must have been sent by Nyaundi. I like, I like the way you're putting that. This, the ship is solid and he must have been sent. Eh? So ladies and gentlemen, um, it's a wrap for today. I thank you all for participating in today's uh, webinar. I can see Wilfred there 